Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Federal health officials meeting today to discuss the abrupt pause of the J&J vaccine. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington with details on what you need to know coming up. And outside with live cam, let's see what's happening out there. Lots of low clouds, very humid yet again. What would probably feel like a more normal daytime high temperature is our current temperature. Good morning to you. It's Wednesday, April 14th. Thanks for joining us this morning. And if you got out yesterday, I like the overcast weather. It wasn't too hot yesterday. Exactly. Those clouds kind of hung around and we'll see if they'll do the same today. Mike Ostrage is here. Good morning to you, Mike. Good morning. You know, and that interesting, despite the fact that we got up into the low 80s again yesterday, it felt different than the day before because the cloud cover out mm -hmm. there. So we keep a lot of clouds around. Still going to be warm again today. And yeah, we are starting off very, very mild. There have been a couple of light showers being reported. Some out there at the airport. And now again, this is clutter kind of around the radar site where you see it doesn't move. And then obviously there's not much out there, but just a few little spots where we do have some showers. And so just kind of keep a lookout for that, that there may be one or two light showers around the area throughout the rest of the morning. As you can see, uh, even a couple of them there around Nix, and it's kind of hard uh, to see some of those out there. But again, there is a little bit of light rain. Then we'll start to see more showers and a few thunderstorms later on this afternoon. Some fog down to the southeast as well with all this humidity around here. So, you know, watch out for a couple of patches of that. 71 here in town, 74 in Helotus, and 60. So we're still uh, about 10 degrees or so above our normal low temperature, and we do have a lot of oak out there, although it did come down from the previous day's reading almost half of what it was the previous day throughout the rest of the morning. We're going to stay basically steady, cloudy, a couple of showers out there, and then later on this afternoon going for a high temperature once again of 80. That is a normal high. We'll have some showers, a couple of thunderstorms, a somewhat better chance for some rain. Then we cool down tomorrow, kind of rebound a little bit on Friday, and then we get the cooler air coming in here for the weekend. It's still more rain chances. More on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King. All right, 432. Anything big out there? Well, the biggest thing we have, Mike, is construction here again on Loop 410 on the west side. Good morning to you. Good morning to everyone out there. This is the view from 410 at Calabra. We're told that traffic is being diverted off of 410 this morning at military. So you can see uh, the crews there. You see some traffic there in the foreground, but we've been seeing a lot of traffic there on the frontage road because of those delays. Just to show you where this is uh, on the map. Again, this is uh, the west side between military and Loop uh, excuse me, State Highway 151, and then also some work there, Calebra, that's the view uh, you saw. So uh, just watch out for this again. Uh, yesterday, this went a little past 5 uh, in the morning. It usually stops at 5 in the morning, but yesterday it did go a little past 5 in the morning. So if your commute takes you out there early in the morning, uh, things should be uh, clearing up in about an hour or so at least. Uh, looking at the rest of the area, things uh, do look fine. We did have some delays like we did yesterday on I-10 at this early hour, but right now things looking fine. 26 minutes between Bernie and downtown and once inside 1604, take you 12 to 13 minutes to get to downtown San Antonio. We'll have another update coming up. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, Samuel. New details this morning on a massive fire that destroyed a number of homes and vehicles over the weekend. Multiple crews responded that fire on JNM Lane just off of FM 476 down in Somerset. Our Stephen Cavazos is live downtown this morning. Stephen, have investigators figured out what sparked this fire? Well, Mark, the Atascosa Fire Marshal does tell us that someone was actually burning trash in the area when a piece had gotten away, and that's when that fire started. But we're also learning that fire forced three families out of their home, leaving them with next to nothing. Now, fire crews did arrive on the scene from surrounding areas to actually evacuate the homes. Five of those homes were destroyed, but we're learning that two were also vacant. In addition, nine vehicles were damaged in that fire. The county had was recently on a 60 day burn ban, but that had expired on April. April 11th. As of this morning, the estimated damage is still not known. Coming up later this morning on GMSA, we'll actually hear from a woman who says she and her family escaped those flames and they're just lucky to be alive. We'll have more on that story coming up again later this morning on GMSA. But for now, reporting live, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. 
This morning, questions about when the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine will once again be available after federal health officials abruptly caused, called rather for a pause in administering those shots. It comes after six people out of the nearly 7 million who received the vaccine developed an extremely rare blood clotting disorder. ABC's Faith Abube is in Washington with the latest. This morning, all 50 states, D.C. and Puerto Rico, temporarily canceling their Johnson & Johnson vaccine appointments. An investigation underway after six people who received the one-dose vaccine developed an extremely rare blood clot. This is a really rare event. There have been six out of the 6.85 million doses, which is less than one in a million. The FDA and CDC recommending the pause out of an abundance of caution. The six patients, women between 18 and 48 years old, they develop symptoms like severe headaches, shortness of breath, abdominal or leg pain within three weeks of receiving the shot. One woman died, another is in critical condition. Health officials still don't know whether it was the vaccine that caused the rare disorder. So I think people need to be reassured that even when there's no definitive link or cause that no chances will be taken when it comes to people's safety. But worries of vaccine hesitancy, as some scheduled for the J&J shot, are now having second thoughts. I don't want to take any chance. You know, it's my body and I, I want to be uh, safe. The ability for governors to reinstill confidence after something like this is a hundred times harder than putting the pause on in the first place. Health officials still believe the benefits of getting vaccinated far outweigh any potential risks. While the J&J jab is examined, President Biden saying the race to vaccinate continues. There's enough vaccine that is basically 100 percent unquestionable for every single solitary American. Again, federal health officials are hosting a public meeting today. They're expected to make a decision within the next few days on whether to unpause the J&J vaccine. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. So here is a look at where things stand with the coronavirus cases here at home. There are 273 new cases confirmed along with one new death. There's a little bit of a decrease in our local hospitalizations. 211 COVID patients are being treated this morning. 76 are in ICU, 33 are on ventilators. And time now is 437 and it looks like we're at 71 degrees even though your screen says 74. So the head, President Biden has accepted an invitation to address a joint session of Congress. Details on what he is expected to discuss with lawmakers. And the San Antonio Spurs look to keep the win streak going. A preview of tonight's game against Toronto. That's coming up. Back outside with a live cam. Yeah, a few sprinkly showers showing up on radar this morning. Hard to see much of that right now, but we do have the low clouds in place. Will our rain chances stay in the forecast in the coming days? Mike Ostrahage is coming up. We've made it to midweek. New this morning, the Dallas Morning News is reporting that former Texas Lieutenant Governor David Dewhurst has been arrested on a domestic violence charge in Dallas. Officials say the 75-year-old was booked into the Dallas County Jail on a misdemeanor count yesterday afternoon. According to police, officers were called to a disturbance near Dallas Love Field. They spoke to a woman who said she had been assaulted by a man she knew. Police said they identified Dewhurst as a suspect and he was taken into custody. Look for more on that story as it develops. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has officially invited President Joe Biden to speak at a joint session of Congress. The president accepted the invitation last night to speak on April 28th. Pelosi wrote in a letter to the president that she wants him to share his vision for the country. This will be the first time the president has given remarks to both chambers during his presidency. It also comes as the administration is responding to the COVID-19 pandemic and calling on lawmakers to back his major infrastructure proposal. Officials say six people were rescued and a dozen others are still missing after a commercial boat capsized in the Gulf of Mexico off the coast of Louisiana. The Coast Guard says it got a distress call yesterday afternoon. An urgent marine information broadcast was issued and multiple Good Samaritan boat crews responded and joined Coast Guard crews in the rescue operation. The 129 foot power lift boat that capsized is used for oil and gas exploration. The National Weather Service in New Orleans had issued a special marine warning Tuesday about steep waves in the region. It said to seek safe harbor and take protective actions. 
A new group made up of former senior aides to President Donald Trump has formally launched. Its goal is to permanently fuse the former president's America First agenda with the Republican Party. The nonprofit called the America First Policy Institute have a staff of 35 former Trump aides. They include former cabinet secretaries, top national security advisors, and members of the former president's evangelical advisory board. It plans to have an office in the Washington suburb of Arlington, Virginia. A statement the former president says the group's members have his full support and he looks forward to working with them. For the first time since November of 2016, the Spurs have won back-to-back -back road games on back-to-back -back nights. It started in Dallas on Sunday with DeMar DeRozan's game-winning basket with under a second to play and finished up with a blowout of the Magic in Orlando. Now the Spurs are taking on the Toronto Raptors tonight in Tampa, Florida. Tip-off is set for 6.30. Go Spurs go, go Spurs go. Go Spurs go. <laughs> so nervous. Four, 4.43, about 73 degrees. <laughs> Over the last year, mental health apps on our phones have grown in popularity, but what you share isn't always kept private. Up next, a look at what information some apps are collecting. And next, a first look at a major break in a missing person case in California regarding a college student who disappeared 25 years ago. And welcome back. It's about 446. There is a major break in California in the missing person case of Kristen Smart, a college student who disappeared 25 years ago after leaving a campus party. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, a possible cold case breakthrough. For nearly 25 years, questions have remained unanswered in the disappearance of Kristen Smart. The then 19-year-old freshman disappeared after a party near California Polytechnic State University. Investigators say she was last seen with classmate Paul Flores, who was walking her home that night. This morning, Flores waking up behind bars accused of murder. Paul remained as a person of interest and as the case progressed, became uh, a suspect and the prime suspect in the case. Uh, detectives secured a court order authorizing the interception and monitoring of Paul Flores' cell phone and text messages. Smart's family has been hoping for answers for decades. We don't have closure. We don't know what's happened, and it's been 20 years. So what's the next step for investigators? We speak with the podcaster who helped shed new light on the case. It's coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. After a tough year of stress and anxiety, a lot of people have downloaded mental health apps for support. But as 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz tells us, some information may not be as private as you think. Search mental health in the app store and you get a range of options from guided meditations to appointments with a licensed therapist. But mental health apps aren't always covered by the same medical privacy laws like HIPAA that protect what you share with a doctor in person. And even when HIPAA rules do apply, they may not cover all the data an app collects. What companies tell you about what they do with your data is often pretty vague and confusing and it's usually buried in privacy policies where it can be hard to find. Consumer Report found many apps send information to third parties such as Facebook and Google. This kind of data is often used for advertising or business research. While it's a common practice, it may not be what you expect from apps that deal with mental health. We didn't see these apps sharing details about your condition or what you're telling your therapist, but they may be letting other companies know you're using a mental health app. If privacy is important to you, check to see if and where your data is being shared. If you're using a mental health app, be sure it's clear about who will be administering your care. While apps can be beneficial, there are a lot of services that can connect you with a licensed professional for teletherapy. We have more information on our website. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Well, it's still awfully early, but the early bird gets the worm when it comes to the morning commute. Yeah, how are things looking, especially right there at Loop 410 and Calibra Road? Yeah, Mark and Stephanie, uh, people out and about early are running into some construction again this morning on the west side. This is the view from Loop 410 and Calibra. There is some uh, construction uh, southbound, so traffic being uh, diverted there at Military Highway. So let's take a look uh, 
closer at, at this. So this is where traffic is being diverted. You see the signs for uh, 151. You see the emergency crews again. This went a little past 5 a.m. Uh, yesterday. Usually this stuff wraps up around then, but it did go a little bit longer. So just something if you uh, have to head out and about early uh, this morning uh, to just to keep in mind in, in this area. So but again, in the next 45 minutes or so, that should be clear. Again, uh, this is a Loop 410 State Highway 151. This is Military Drive. Uh, this is uh, 151, so you see the not too many delays at the moment, but again, uh, you saw there in the Transkai picture what's going on. Uh, taking a look at the rest of the area, pretty quiet generally, but we do have a bit of an issue, construction also related issue here on 35 northbound at uh, Loop 410, some construction between 1604 and Somerset, so that's causing a bit of a slowdown there as well. Again, that should be uh, wrapping up here fairly shortly. And taking one look at uh, 35 from the northeast side though, 10 minutes, uh, into downtown and from the southwest side also 10 minutes once you get past loop 410 things do improve on 35 at this hour guys thank you samuel and the beautiful picture behind I love, yeah nice and colors i love how somebody did they know where the sun's going to be going down and then you just got to wait for that perfect moment because you blink and you're going to miss it but yeah that's a great shot as the sun just kind of squeezes in between the trees right there beautiful we had a lot of clouds around yesterday and that uh, kept it a little bit more pleasant in the afternoon again despite the fact we still had humidity we still had temperatures up into the 80s when you don't have that sun beaten down it's a little more tolerable and uh, you want to watch out for it maybe a couple of damp spots on the roads this morning there was uh, a couple of were a couple of showers um, being reported out there at the airport earlier this morning. There's a little bit of light rain. Now it, it gets kind of kind of messy sometimes trying to see what exactly is going on. This is the clutter around the radar site. Same thing out here near you Valley, but you see some of these little green spots that are moving. Those are some of the the light showers out there. So one or two light showers around the area this morning. Of course, we've got plenty of humidity and that is basically going to be sticking around throughout the rest of the day. Maybe a little break out in northwest portions of the hill country, but we we keep this humidity at least though with the humid air uh, we've got the disturbances which are going to be squeezing it out as far as some rain chances so it's not as though we just keep the humidity around don't get any benefit from it as far as any rain now tomorrow slight break as we get more of a northeasterly flow and we get some of this cooler air coming in here tomorrow then it won't be really until the weekend that we get a big big drop in the humidity so computer model today uh, a couple of scattered showers around here this particular model is not overly bullish with the rain but we will still have more showers and a couple of thunderstorms around here it's trying to pick some of those up down there to the southeast one thing though to take note of this model and another one Tomorrow morning have a couple of showers around here, but they're also trying to get this one cell to develop and out there in the hill country and then work its way across the area in through uh, mid morning tomorrow. So this will be something to see. Like I said, there's a couple of models that are trying to pick up on that little disturbance that would work its way across the area tomorrow morning. So that'll be something to uh, watch out for. And then we'll continue to have some rain chances around here, not only throughout the day tomorrow, but also Friday. They'll start to taper off then because I think we start to get into the peak of some opportunities for rain tomorrow and Friday and then we're still looking at the cooler air coming in here by the weekend. So today 78 degrees, couple of showers around here at noon and few showers, couple of thunderstorms mixed in as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. Once again, getting up to uh, 80 for a high temperature normal average high temperature you'd expect for uh, the middle of April and then tomorrow we get a shot of cooler air coming in here. So notice how the low temperatures are still really mild. So that means a lot of humidity 74 tomorrow back to 78 on Friday and the better chances of rain are tomorrow and Friday Saturday. The cool air comes in here. So only 65 for a high temperature and those lows right around 50 maybe even upper 40s in some spots and low 40s in parts of the hill country. And that's going to be over the weekend and then rain chances continue to sort of taper off. But again, the best window I think is really today and then through Friday for some rain. I think we're ready for a few stormy days. Yes, we need the rain. And that would be real nice. Yeah, and especially this weekend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. 453. And still ahead, why the director of Avatar says it might be a little while before you see any new footage of the film's upcoming sequel. That's now in the works. Avatar, a little closer to finally having a sequel, plus a popular English drama on Netflix, is sticking around for a while. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. You should not be here. 
it's going to be a while until we see any footage from the upcoming Avatar sequels, the first of which is due out at the end of next year. Director James Cameron is working on them now, and while he couldn't say much, he did tell me a little about what to expect. We can say that we'll, we'll look through the lens of an alternate world at our own world and hopefully remind people of how majestic and beautiful our own world is, especially the oceans. The oceans, very important to him. He produced the Nat Geo series Secrets of the Whales, which premieres on Disney Plus next week. Miss Bridgerton! Oh, pardon me. Calling all lords and ladies, Netflix's soapy English drama Bridgerton will be sticking around for a while. The series has been renewed for seasons three and four, all before season two, even as a premiere date. In its statement, Netflix says it plans on being in the Bridgerton business for a long time to come. Surprise new music from Mick Jagger and Dave Grohl. The song Easy Sleazy features Jagger on vocals and guitar with Grohl on backup vocals, drums, guitar, and bass. Jagger says the song is about the world coming out of lockdown and the light at the end of the tunnel. And happy birthday, Buffy. Actress Sarah Michelle Gellar is 44 today, while country music legend Loretta Lynn is 89. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Oh my gosh, the coal miner's daughter. Yeah, happy right. birthday. <laughs> it's about three till right now on your Wednesday morning. And still ahead on GMSA, police and protesters faced off once again overnight in Minnesota following the most recent shooting of a man by police officers. And both Apple and Microsoft announcing new products over the next few weeks. A preview of new iPads as well as Surface laptops is coming up in your morning tech bites. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Five people have been detained following a stabbing overnight that left a man with possible life-threatening injuries. More details just ahead. Plus the latest on the Minnesota police shooting as the police chief and an officer both resign amid more controversy and protests. And back here at home outside with live cam, what if we told you we had a few stormy days ahead? And we're not talking a washout here, but we need the rain. Mike is standing by with the very latest. Good morning to you. It is Wednesday morning. It is April 14th. Thank you. No problem. My anniversary, <laughs> so I have to remember. Oh, it is your anniversary today? <laughs> yes. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. My husband's asleep. That's okay. Yeah. Nine. Nine years. Yeah. Went by right. quick. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Mike is standing by, and Mike, it, uh, you have a, a stormy forecast. Not yes. necessarily today, but go ahead. I'm, 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 You're done. Anyway, yeah. yes, uh, we do have some rain in the forecast. Now, it's not going to be raining constantly, and I don't know if this is going to be, you know, the, the salvation as far as uh, the lack of rain that we've had, but at least we do have rain chances out there the next couple of days, and, and they're starting to peak as we go into the next few days as well. Very warm, very humid. The normal average low temperature is upper 50s, so we're at 73, you know, 10, 15 degrees above that. And that bottom dumber dew point still in the 60s, which means there's plenty of humidity out there. We do have a few showers as well. Temperatures, again, yeah, with this warm start, aren't really going too much of anywhere today. We keep a lot of humidity around here, cloud cover, showers, and 80 for a high temperature today. Then we go into the next couple of days. Like I said, I think we continue to go up with some rain chances. The aquifer took a big hit yesterday, down nine tenths of a foot, and allergies. Oak is still very high, but about half of what it was the previous day when it was uh, in the mid 4000 range. We do have, like I said, a couple of uh, sprinkly showers that have been showing up on radar this morning. Some have been reported as well. You can see not much right there in the center of the green blob around New Braunfels, just some kind of some clutter. But you see a few of these little light uh, showers here and there scattered about the area. Not much yet, but more will develop as the morning and the afternoon roll on. Still have some fog. LaGrange uh, down here along the coastal plain. Victoria, Beeville, not too bad. We just got to keep an eye out for that this morning as well. And then throughout the rest of today, well, this morning, warm, humid, a couple of uh, light showers, a few showers, maybe a couple of thunderstorms thrown in right around 80. Normal high temperature today, but we still keep humidity around here. We are going to be cooler tomorrow with a few showers and thunderstorms. So low to mid 70s kind of rebound a little bit Friday and then drop down into the 60s. Very cool this weekend and still some rain, especially on Friday. A couple of showers left over on Saturday, but uh, much drier air as well. Just keep your fingers crossed for some rain the next couple of days. Details in just a few minutes and traffic authority Samuel King 
What, just construction out there? Anything big? Yeah, just uh, construction there. And I was just looking here at the Transkite view at 410 at Calabria. We've had this construction uh, this week overnight that has closed some of the main lanes. And it looks like sort of a little bit beyond schedule, but not too badly, uh, that they are clearing uh, this construction. And soon these lanes are going to be uh, reopened here. Uh, this is uh, Calabria, of course, as we mentioned, uh, right here approaching uh, Highway 151. Uh, so that's uh, some good news. So these uh, lanes that have been closed overnight uh, should be opening shortly. So let's take a look at this on the map. You can see uh, most of the delays are gone, but uh, we all are hearing about a, an issue here at military in 151. There's some uh, reports of a crash, so we'll check on that uh, for our next update. So not too far away uh, from this construction site. Again, a crash there at military and State Highway 151. Uh, looking out for the rest of the area, things are looking pretty good. Uh, travel times coming in from the west, 19 minutes coming in uh, from Castroville on US 90, 25 minutes from the Bernie area into downtown San Antonio, 26 minutes from the New Braunfels area into downtown. And we'll have another update shortly. Thank you, Samuel. San Antonio police are investigating a stabbing that sent one man to the hospital with life-threatening injuries. This happened last night in the 1200 block of Pleasanton Road east of I-35. Our Stephen Cavazos is live downtown this morning. Now, Stephen, do investigators know what prompted this altercation? Yeah, Mark Stephanie, right now that remains under investigation this morning. Now, police do say the man who was believed to be in his 50s was not able to give them much information, but they do tell us that he was at a group home apartment of some sorts and it was later stabbed at that location and five people were later detained. Now, this happened sometime around 1130 last night. Police say that that man was stabbed in his abdomen and rushed to University Hospital. Now, although his condition is not known right now, his injuries were possibly life threatening at the time. Right now, police have not identified the suspect, but they say this still remains under investigation. And although that this is an ongoing investigation as of this morning, police do believe that alcohol did play a factor in this stabbing. Of course, you can stay with KSAT as we continue to bring you the latest on this developing story. For now, reporting live downtown, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Stephen. 506, the Minneapolis area on edge amid growing anger over the fatal police shooting of Dante Wright. For the third straight night, protesters were back on the streets of Brooklyn Center facing off with police and National Guard troops. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the details. Another night of unrest in Brooklyn Center, Minnesota, where crowds once again gather past curfew. Protesting the death of Dante Wright, the 20-year-old unarmed black man killed by police during a traffic stop. Some demonstrators used a line of umbrellas to shield themselves as police fired flashbangs. The protests coming hours before an expected announcement today on possible charges for Wright's death. According to our Minneapolis station, KSTP, the county attorney's office is planning on charging former police officer Kim Potter today. The extent of the charges, unclear. Wright's loved ones, including the mother of his two-year-old son, are demanding a murder charge. I'm completely charged, and I just want justice for my son's dad, because it's just not fair. Officer Potter shot and killed Wright Sunday while trying to arrest him on an outstanding warrant. Records show Wright failed to appear in court on charges of possessing a firearm without a permit and running away from law enforcement. Body camera video shows Wright trying to get back into his car during the arrest. Officer Potter is heard yelling taser, but then fires her gun. Officials call the shooting an accidental discharge. Tuesday, the 26-year veteran tried to quit, writing, I believe it is in the best interest of the community, the department, and my fellow officers if I resign immediately. But the mayor says he has not accepted Potter's resignation amid outcry from local leaders who say she should be fired because the resignation could allow her to collect a pension. Police Chief Tim Gannon has also resigned after being criticized for the department's response. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. And we are less than a week away before voters will make a decision on several local races that includes choosing who will lead the city of San Antonio. Last night kicked off the bare facts case at San Antonio Report three day mayoral forum meant to give you a chance to hear from three candidates. So last night incumbent Mayor Ron Nirenberg was asked about several issues including discussions over the police union contract and the proposition that could remove collective bargaining. He talked about the pledge he made about accountability. And I wanted to make sure that people knew I understood that and I want to be held accountable for the outcomes uh, of what we're trying to achieve in terms of the negotiation. That's what that was all about. 
Uh, we can get this done. We've got to get it done at the table, at least under the current rules. Um, and, and it may not be easy, it may not be quick, uh, but I want to be held accountable to it. The conversation also covered topics like the homeless, the Alamo development plan, and Nuremberg also responded to the call for safety measures for cyclists and pedestrians. You can watch the entire forum right now on our website at kset.com. Our forum's not over yet. Tonight you'll get a chance to hear from former councilman and mayoral candidate Greg Brockhaus. We'll begin the forum on air at 6.30, then online at kset.com at 7. We will then hear from Denise Gutierrez-Homer tomorrow evening. And time now is 509, excuse me, and in about 73 degrees right now. Still ahead, Apple getting ready to show off a new round of iPads, and Max will tell you when coming up plus. After an especially cold snap this winter, spring has finally sprung. But what does that mean for the wildflower season? I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam, a humid start to your day. We are at 73 degrees and we are expecting that much rated, needed rain. We'll be right back. 513, welcome back. Seems like uh, only yesterday when ice and snow were covering the ground and now that spring has finally sprung, it is time for this, the blue bonnets to take over. We were ready, but as Katrina Weber reports, the wildflower season is taking a bit longer to warm up. It's not every day this family gets to stop and smell the wildflowers. Their life in the Big Apple can be hectic. I hadn't seen blue bonnets for about 19 years since moving to New York, and so I really wanted to come see them. A native San Antonian, Ann Dias Little, had told her husband Jeremy all about our wildflower season. They're beautiful. We've got lots of pictures around the house of them, but seeing them and, you know, I'm ready to see the field. Uh, uh, Field, filled with them. With their jobs shut down by the pandemic, the family thought this was a good time to make lasting memories here in Texas with baby Corey. Corey look at the camera. That's fine. So far, though, it's not quite what they pictured. A patch here and there. They are a little late. Uh, the weather did push them behind a little bit, but also we can contribute that to how dry we are. Scott Litchkey with the San Antonio Botanical Garden says drought conditions added to an unusual winter in San Antonio have some spring blooms making a delayed appearance. He says although February snow and ice put an unforgiving freeze on citrus plants and palm trees, it looks like wildflowers were able to dodge that deadly frozen bullet. The most crucial time for Texas wildflowers is really September, October, November. That's when they set their seed and they begin to germinate. While nature has dealt this area a double blow this year, the experts say don't count out this wildflower season just yet. There's still a lot more time for it to grow. Don't give up on the blue bonnets. They're a little behind, but they're coming. The littles, though, are making the most of the current blue bonnet situation. They're there and, you know, it'll, it'll scratch the itch for now. <laughs> Settling for their flower fix in small doses. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Ah, great story. Cute yeah. picks. Yeah, I was going to say great picks as well. Making memories as we Aww. watch. 515 on your Wednesday morning. And still ahead, Microsoft announcing a brand new version of its popular Surface laptop. We're going to have a preview. Are you ready to join the doers? Those who do more with less asthma. Thanks to Dupixent, the add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma. Dupixent isn't for sudden breathing problems. It can improve lung function for better breathing in as little as two weeks and help prevent severe asthma attacks. It's not a steroid, but can help reduce or eliminate oral steroids. Dupixent can cause serious allergic reactions, including anaphylaxis. Get help right away if you have rash, shortness of breath, chest pain, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection. And don't change or stop your asthma treatments, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Do more with less asthma. Talk to your asthma specialist about Dupixent. If your financial situation has changed, we may be able to help. 
in today's Tech Bytes, a new launch event for Apple. The tech giant has confirmed its latest product reveal will be next Tuesday. The event is expected to show off Apple's new iPads and Macs. There's also talk of new AirPods and AirTags, a tracking device to help keep track of valuables. Microsoft has unveiled its Surface Laptop 4 competition for Apple's MacBook Air. Customers will have two sizes to choose from, 13.5 or 15 inch. They offer up to 19 hours of battery life and start at $1,000. Finally, Facebook is testing a video speed dating app. It's called Sparked and it's touted as video speed dating with kind people. Initial dates last four minutes, but if users agree, they can schedule a 10 minute second date. Sparked is free and there's no swiping. But a 10 minute date, you must really feel the spark. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. Just about 520. And there was a little bit of traffic out at Loop 410 and Culebra Road. Samuel, how's it looking right now? Yeah, they are picking up that construction, uh, Stephanie and Mark, uh, this morning that they had uh, overnight uh, in this area, but you can still see some vehicles there. But unlike a little bit earlier, uh, the lanes in both directions there at uh, between military and State Highway 151 uh, have reopened here. Uh, but again, you can see some of the remaining construction vehicles uh, out there, but traffic is flowing pretty well. But not too far away from there, we do have a crash still on the board here. This is uh, on military at State Highway 151, but traffic does seem to be uh, flowing well there at this hour. But again, uh, not far from that construction zone, there is a crash there on military and 151. Uh, looking across uh, the rest of the area, things mostly looking okay, but we do have another crash reported here in eastern Bear County uh, on the very edge of the city of San Antonio. This is Foster Road at FM 1346 and you can see a little bit of a delay there on 1346 this morning. But overall on the east side things looking fine. Remember we told you earlier this week that uh, most of the new lanes on I-10 between 1604 and 410 are uh, substantially complete and you can see that's making impact on travel times just five minutes between the loops on the east side guys. Thank you, Samuel. Mike, all this missing from your picture this morning. Oh, I thought you had a picture. Oh, I do. We, we I will have one. We will have yes. one. Okay. Uh, is a tabernacle choir? Oh, <laughs> yes. Very appropriate. There you go. There and it the, is. And the word of the day is crepuscular. Crepuscular. Which is one of those words that kind of sounds a little funny. Can I get it in a sentence? Uh, the crepuscular rays were shining brightly poking through the clouds yesterday. I'll try to remember that. How about that? Because they're beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But it sounds like it should refer to something. Anyway, never mind. <laughs> Good to see you. Thank Are you. you. Uh, crepes? No. Okay. Uh, anyway, <laughs> we do have a lot of clouds out there. And as far as the sunshine and the rays of the sun, probably not going to be poking through this morning. Uh, maybe a, well in the next couple of days. I doubt if we see much of any sunshine today just because of the, uh, the cloud cover out there. A couple of light little sprinkly showers. This is a, a lot of clutter, but we will have some, some rain. There has been some reported. Just kind of watch it because it's not a lot right now. So it's the kind that's going to make the road slippery if indeed we do get some of this rain. Uh, 73 three degrees right now. We're about 15 above normal should be in the upper 50s for a an average low temperature normal low. And here's the overall situation. We've got this. Uh, well, the surface winds right now are out of the northeast. We had a bit of a front moving on through here, but we still have this flow coming in from the west to southwest and all these little disturbances are working their way on through here. And so that's what's going to be as we get these little stronger impulses coming through. That's what's going to help to touch off some of the uh, showers and thunderstorms. So we've got a better chance of some rain today. Now this computer model is one of those. This is one I showed that kind of goes a little further in the future and it tends to kind of broad brush things. Now this doesn't mean everybody's going to be seeing rain all at once, but the opportunity is there and about a 40% chance for some showers, a couple of thunderstorms thrown in today. Tomorrow we'll start off with a little bit of uh, light rain around the area. The difference tomorrow though is we're going to be seeing uh, temperatures down somewhat about mid 70s, then kind of rebounds a little bit Friday. Then we get the nice surge of the really cooler air coming in here for the weekend. We'll have a few more showers around on Friday and then even going into Saturday and maybe a little bit of sunshine thrown in on Saturday as well. And then most of the rain is is going to be out of here, perhaps a leftover sprinkler or two by uh, Sunday. But I think the best opportunity now is today through about uh, Friday or early Saturday for some rain. 78 degrees, a couple of showers around the area. And again, it's not unfortunately a sure thing that we're going to be seeing rain. It won't be raining constantly, but best opportunity in a while. 80 for a high temperature today. 
right around normal. A couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms. Tomorrow we start off notice mid 60s still, which means still plenty of humidity around here with those low temperatures staying up there in the mid 60s, but only mid 70s for a high temperature. Upper 70s Friday and then cooler air comes in here. Look at that mid to lower 50s. Even some upper 40s are possible once we get into uh, Sunday morning in the first part of next week with that cooler air and drier air coming on in here. But yeah, keep fingers crossed. Rub rabbit's foot, whatever it takes to get some rain. <laughs> yes, and again, do. the word of the day is crepuscular. Correct. Thank Very you. good. Thank you, Mike. 524 on your Wednesday morning. And in your morning spotlight, Mick Jagger releases a surprise lockdown song, plus your first look at the Hitman's Bodyguard, starring Selma Hayek and Daniel Jackson. Mick Jagger releasing a pandemic rock anthem, plus a first look at the Hitman. Hitman's wife's bodyguard. Had to get that straight. Yes, there's a lot of lot right there. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. Mick Jagger's coming out of lockdown with a surprise song about the experience. Easy Sleazy features Dave Grohl on drums, bass, and guitar for the pandemic rock anthem of sorts, which Jagger revealed on Tuesday. For the first time, I'm starting to imagine a life without bodyguarding. This really feels like a new book. Here's your first look at the hitman's wife's bodyguard. Salma Hayek joins Samuel L. Jackson and Ryan Reynolds in the action comedy sequel due in theaters June 16th. Leslie Odom Jr. performed his original song, Speak Now, from One Night in Miami as part of the BAFTA Awards opening night ceremony. The tune is up for Best Original Song at this year's Academy Awards, and Odom is nominated for Best Supporting Actor for the film. This year's Oscars are Sunday, April 25th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. It's now 528. Still ahead on GMSA, details on an emergency session with the CDC's Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices regarding issues with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. That's why doctors are concerned about new, a new sleep disorder in kids that affects children during the day. And this is for all the bacon lovers out there. IHOP has a special menu just for you. Details coming up. Hi, welcome back. It is Wednesday, April 14th. Steph is smiling bigger than usual today. Yeah. It's her ninth wedding anniversary today. Yeah. Happy anniversary, Thank Steph. Thank you so much. I was just telling Mark that it rained on our wedding day, but I took it as a sign of good luck. That is supposed to be good luck, right, Mike? I, that's what I've always heard, too. Yeah, if it rains on your wedding day, it's very good luck, so... Isn't Luis a lucky guy? Yeah. Aww, I'm a he's lucky gal. A, he's also a co-worker. Yeah. Yes, he's a photographer here at KSAT. Yes, yes yeah. so we're stuck with both of them. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Anyway, happy anniversary, sweetie. Uh, we've got a lot of clouds out here uh, this morning and very very mild, very humid temperatures are about 15 degrees above normal. Upper 50s is what you'd expect this time of year. Uh, not much wind to speak of and got a lot of humidity. There are a couple of patches of fog here and there. I don't think it's going to be a huge issue, but just kind of watch out for that as well as we have a few light little uh, sprinkles out there. This is some clutter kind of around the radar site and just you know, uh, a few little scattered showers here and there, but we will start to see a couple more later on this morning and then this afternoon. Even a few thunderstorms are going to be possible later on this afternoon. Oak is still on the high side, but it came down about half of what it was the previous day, and that was on the heels of that, you know, record setting 40,000 plus reading that we had on Sunday. And the updated count, of course, is going to be coming out just after 7 o'clock this, this morning. A couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms later on today, 82, and that's uh, about normal for this time of year. Then we are going to be seeing the cooler air come on in here tomorrow, kind of rebound Friday, and then the real, real cool stuff comes in here for the weekend. But rain chances are kind of the best opportunity for some rain now through about uh, late Friday, or early Saturday. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King. Hadn't any big, big problems out there so far. No, things looking generally uh, fine uh, this morning, Mike. Good morning to you and good morning to everyone, including your travel times, including 28 minutes 
on 37 northbound from the Pleasanton area, 27 minutes, and 20 minutes from Lytle on 35 into downtown San Antonio. That's a little higher than normal, and we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, this is 410 at Calabria. We've been telling you that there was some construction overnight. Now that is uh, completely cleared uh, in this area, so that's good news for people on the uh, west side uh, this morning here. They're adjusting the camera a little bit to show that uh, things are looking fine there and we also had a crash over there near military and 151 but that has been cleared as well uh, this is still on the board here in eastern bear county foster road at 1346 we expect that to be cleared up soon shortly so if your commute takes you over there uh, that's something to watch out for and now we have some delays here uh, this is 35 northbound we had some construction overnight but looks like there might be some uh, residual issues down here you're down to 14 miles per hour approaching loop 410 on the southwest side. So that's going to slow you down this morning if you are commuting from uh, the southwest side into downtown. So that's something to look out for and we'll keep an eye on it throughout the morning. Mark Stephanie, over to you. What is next for Johnson & Johnson's COVID-19 vaccine? That's the question immunization experts from the CDC will be talking about later this afternoon. CNN's Brett Conway has the latest on what we can expect to come out of that meeting. From production to packaging to planes to patients. But now, less than two months later, pressing pause on the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine after reports of rare but severe blood clots. More than 6.8 million people in the U.S. have gotten the vaccine. Six reportedly developed blood clots. That's less than a one in a million rate. All women between the ages of 18 and 48 whose symptoms showed up within 13 days of being vaccinated. But there's no definitive link at this point. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the Food and Drug Administration say a CDC panel will, quote, review these cases and assess their potential significance. The U.S. Surgeon General says the pause on J&J &J vaccines gives them time to work with doctors and nurses. We can enlist their help in looking for the kind of symptoms we may be concerned about. People experiencing a severe headache, abdominal pain, leg pain, or shortness of breath who've gotten the vaccine within the last three weeks should contact their doctor, the CDC says. Another reason for the pause? To do the investigation quickly, to understand whether there's a connection between the vaccine and the adverse events. If a connection is found, then the FDA and CDC may come out with recommendations that include warnings, for example, for certain populations that may be at increased risk. But that's what immunization experts from the CDC still need to figure out. And they're shooting to vote on updated recommendations on the vaccine by the end of the day. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Egyptian authorities have seized the massive cargo ship, the Ever Given, which ran aground on the Suez Canal back in March 23rd. The move comes amid a dispute over financial damages after an Egyptian court ordered the vessel's Japanese owner to pay $900 million in compensation. The Egyptians say the fine is to cover losses inflicted when the ship blocked hundreds of vessels from sailing through the Suez Canal for almost a week. The Ever Given was successfully refloated March 29th, and the ship and its cargo have been seized until the dispute is resolved. A new study found the healthiest meal of the day for kids comes from school cafeterias. Researchers analyzed the diets of more than 21,000 kids from 2003 and 2018. They found the percentage of food eaten at schools that was poor nutritional quality declined from 55% to 24% over those 15 years. The percentage was healthier than the meals from the grocery store and restaurants. One of the study's authors points out only 9% of calories kids eat come from schools. He says the decrease mainly happened after 2010. That's when the Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act was passed. The act established new nutrition standards for meals in schools aimed at making sure kids have access to healthy meals. It's now 5:37. We're in the 70s this morning. And still had White Claw is coming out with a new version of its famous seltzer that has an extra kick to it. And next, important information you need to know about a new kind of sleep disorder that is affecting more and more children. And taking a look outside the fly cam, Cuban now, but get ready for that rain. Don't forget to grab the umbrella. We'll be right back. Doctors are noticing that children have been suffering from an increase rather in sleep disorders during the COVID pandemic. Aside from the change in social and school activities, there's another new development. As Ursula Perry tells us, it's a new sleep disorder in kids that affects them at night and during the day. Jumping, rollerblading. Nine-year-old Emily Cavanis is very active during the day and at night. I used to um, 
wake up like every couple hours. She would be at the bottom of her bed or have fallen out of the bed or her covers were all over the place. Mom Melissa tried everything to help her daughter get quality sleep, but nothing worked until she saw a sleep specialist who diagnosed Emily with restless sleep disorder or RSD. A newly identified pediatric sleep disorder that consists on frequent movements through the night once the child has fallen asleep. This disorder can lead to daytime symptoms such as daytime sleepiness or sometimes inattention, hyperactivity, um, maybe some um, school or behavioral problems. Researchers found kids with RSD had very low iron levels. Iron is a very important cofactor in the production of a neurotransmitter called dopamine. Emily got an infusion of iron intravenously and took iron supplements for three months to treat her RSD. She was sleeping through the night better. She wasn't all over the bed. Her mood changed too. Less cranky and less tired. Her relationships with her sisters, I think have all improved because of the better sleep. I think Someday. Emily gets tested every three to six months for her iron levels, but the doctors say that you can make up the difference if you have just minor low levels of iron by eating things like spinach and liver and enriched cereals. Don't take an iron supplement, though, unless you've talked to a doctor. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Ursula Perry. And time now is 542 and about 72 degrees. Up next, if you or someone you know is a real fan of all things bacon, stick around. IHOP has a new special menu just for you. And welcome back. It's 545 in your morning consumer headlines. White Claw's new drink has an extra kick. Surge is available in 16 ounce cans with 8% alcohol per volume. The hard sells look currently being sold in blood orange and cranberry flavors. Now White Claw also has three new kinds of its 5% ABV original products, strawberry, pineapple, and blackberry. One of White Claw's major rivals, Truly, also recently released its own 8% of B, excuse me, ABV drink last month. Okay, that sh script got shorter, sorry. <laughs> if it seems the panic buying of paper products has slowed down, sales of toilet paper dropped more than 32% in the 12 weeks ending April 3rd compared to the same year period a year ago. In the same period, purchases of paper towels fell more than 18% and multi-purpose wet wipes sales are down almost 16% versus a year ago. IHOP has a new menu for people who really like bacon. The restaurant and chain calls it the new bacon obsession menu. The menu features seven new items, including candied bacon pancakes, steakhouse premium bacon burger, and a maple bacon milkshake. Mm. IHOP says some of the items are made with its new premium bacon. This bacon is five times thicker than IHOP's regular bacon and finished with a maple glaze. They say the menu will be available Monday through Friday for a limited time only. We'll see, I still don't trust them. Uh, it's the latest love to hate a weird food combination. Popcorn salad is giving the internet indigestion. Yeah, CNN's Jeannie Mose reports. It was a recipe that had folks popping off, calling it everything from a crime to a monstrosity. I am making my snap pea and popcorn salad. Popcorn and salad, two words rarely tossed together. Even its roots were in dispute. On an iconic Midwestern dish. Midwestern? <laughs> vegetables, I for kids as a win. That ain't nothing like, like this. <laughs> the Food Network's Molly Ye whipped the internet into a frenzy with her mayonnaise, sour cream, and Dijon mustard dressing plus veggies ranging from carrots to snap peas, and then the crowning ingredient, popcorn topped with white cheddar powder. The texture of the popcorn in this salad is so weirdly good. Viral video star Kaylin Allen's offended taste buds were reflected in his body language. Oh, it is gooey gooey, baby. I rebuke it. As one revolted viewer tweeted, I did not live through a global pandemic just to be met with popcorn salad on the other side. To end up drowned in mayonnaise and a popcorn salad? Enough to make popcorn want to flee the pot. A writer at BuzzFeed replicated the salad, tasted it, and declared, popcorn salad is trash, and that's exactly where I put it. 
True, even 11 Madison Park, once named the world's best restaurant, has been known to serve a tuna and popcorn starter. But popcorn salad is still destined to be a candidate for the gallery of regrettable food when Molly Ye took a bite. And this is a salad that you eat with a spoon. Critics thought her expression <laughs> showed distaste even as she tasted. But could popcorn be the next crouton? That's a concession we're not willing to make. Yum, yum. Genie Mouse, CNN, New York. As Kevin from our crew would say, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not trying that. <laughs> no. We talked about that yesterday on GMSA mm -hmm. at 9, but I'm glad Genie picked up the yes. story and ran with it. There's a lot more feedback there than, than we had seen. Oh, I wish we, I could remember some of the Twitter. Uh, comments we oh, had. What was it? Something One, like somebody was like this. This salad is a. Uh, it was an insult to me and my ancestors, or something <laughs> right. like. That. And then the one about uh, if you're going to eat this, if you think this is good. Then, or then, then why should you? Why are you questioning what's in the COVID, COVID vaccines? Yeah, yeah, that was the <laughs> other one. <laughs> Pretty funny. All right, let's move along. Time to check traffic. Here is Samuel King. <laughs> let's just keep it, keep it moving. A couple of stalled vehicles there on, on the east side, but uh, other than that, things relatively quiet. Except this issue we've been talking about on the uh, southwest side. There, walking a little early. Sorry, folks. Uh, this is down here on 35 uh, northbound at uh, Loop 410. Uh, you can see traffic still down to 13 miles an hour. We had some construction uh, overnight, but there is some uh, residual uh, delays down there. So if commute takes you in that direction, that's something to watch out for. We did mention the stalled vehicles. These are both on I-10 here, but on 35, your travel times from the northwest, uh, northeast side look fine. Southwest side, once you get inside Loop 410 to downtown, uh, things look okay. And taking a look at Transguide 35, Moreto, this has just popped up there uh, on the frontage road, so we'll give that a check and our next update coming up at the top of the hour, guys. Was Thank the you. pun intentional, by the way? Keep, Keep it moving. moving. Uh, I don't know. Take credit for it. Anyway, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I don't know about the popcorn. <laughs> that almost sounds, you'd have to eat it right away, though, because if it's sat, it would absorb all the moisture right. and then get just mushy. But that, mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I, unless you have salad on one side and popcorn on the other, I guess it maybe. You know, I think this where this popcorn salad deserves to be. Trash. In the backyard for the birds to eat. Oh, there you go. Well, not the kernels. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, beautiful picture. We'll change the subject now. As Sam would say, we'll move along. Yvonne, uh, thank you very much. Beautiful picture of that cardinal out there. Someone uh, just kind of uh, flying around my house the other day, too. It's, it's so pretty to see those. All right, we've got a lot of clouds hanging around this morning, and there have been some reports of a little bit of some light rain. It looks like the road over there, 410 by the airport, is okay we do have a few of these light showers that are sliding on through and again it's just few and far between not much but don't be surprised if you run into a couple of uh, light little showers around here this morning. Visibility, there are some hints of fog. Pleasanton, Catula, Gonzales, uh, down to the southeast as well. With all this humidity around here, just be on the lookout for that. I don't think it's going to be a real, real big issue. 73 here in town, 60s in the hill country, about 15 above normal. Yesterday, we did creep up to 84 degrees. Today, going for 80, a lot more, uh, some thicker clouds and also we are going to be seeing a better chance for some rain, although uh, computer models do have uh, mid to upper 80s, close to 90 down along the Rio Grande Valley. 82 ran off for a high today and uh, 83 in Lackland. Now, as far as rain chances today, a couple of uh, light showers around here. And this computer model isn't as as aggressive, I guess you could say, with the rain, but it does have some of these uh, thunderstorm showers and thunderstorms trying to develop off to the east by later on this afternoon. And the Storm Prediction Center does have in extreme eastern counties the marginal risk that some of those storms could be on the strong side, uh, potentially you know, reaching severe levels and large hail would be some of the biggest threats. And again, this would be uh, in our eastern counties later on this afternoon. So just something to uh, keep in mind with any of these thunderstorms that do happen to pop up later on today. About a 40% chance for shower thunderstorm today. 78 degrees at noon. A couple of showers are going to be trying to develop and then a few more showers and thunderstorms later on. 80 high temperature. Again, watch it, especially off to the east for some of those storms to become a little bit on the stronger side. Tomorrow, we we still start off very, very warm and humid, but we stay in the mid 70s in the afternoon. 
A little bit better chance for some rain. Same thing on Friday, kind of rebounds somewhat with temperatures, and then we drop into the mid 60s over the weekend. And also, we get rid of some of the humidity because those low temperatures will be down in the low 50s, even some upper 40s perhaps by uh, first of the week. Very good. Yep. We, we may have some wannabe green thumbs watching this morning. <laughs> yes, and it has nothing to do with popcorn. Uh, it is National <laughs> Gardening Day. Oh. And so we're going to have uh, Gardenopia on, and they're going to teach uh, how to do an herb garden and, you know, maybe grow some of your own food. There's also a gardening Olympics they're going to be talking about. Oh, really? I've never I, heard yeah, of that. I haven't either, but for all of you green thumb folks or non green thumb folks, maybe you can learn how to get one. On SA Live today at yep. 1. All right, time now is 5.53 and about 72 degrees right now. Your pick three numbers, 540, Fireball 5, Daily 4 number, 7533, Fireball 2. Cash 5, 18, 26, 29, 30, 34. And your Mega Millions, 10, 15, 19, 45, 68, Mega Ball 9, Mega Flyer 4. Good luck. We know there is a lot of history here in San Antonio, but what about beer history? Our case out explains team looked into brewing here in the Alamo City and a brand new episode is out right now. Case out explains San Antonio is a brew town now available on KSAT.com, the KSAT TV app on streaming devices and also on Facebook. Several city of San Antonio facilities are back open since COVID-19 indicators have moved in the right direction, but some will still need to follow safety protocols and physical distancing measures. We have a full list of openings online right now at KSAT.com. Gardening is known to help lower stress, improve your mood, and could be a great form of exercise. Still ahead on GMSA this morning, we'll take a visit to the San Antonio Botanical Garden to learn more about easy ways to grow your own garden right here in South Texas. Let's check in the roads with Transcribe. Wow, a whole bunch of folks have hit the roads now in the last few minutes. You're looking at 1604 and Bandera Road, which is not quite as busy, but 410 at Rolling Ridge is. We'll check back in with our traffic expert, Samuel King. Days after a massive fire in Atascosa County, one woman is lucky to be alive. I'm Stephen Cavazos and coming up this morning on GMSA, why she says she's been left with next to nothing. Federal health officials meeting today to discuss the abrupt pause of the J&J &J vaccine. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington with details on what you need to know coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we are expecting that much needed rain, but for now, let's deal with the humidity. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. Hope you slept well or had a good overnight shift. It is Wednesday, April 14th. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for being with us. Yeah, grab an extra cup of coffee if you're having trouble getting started that morning. Uh, our ray of sunshine here is extra happy today. She's celebrating her ninth wedding anniversary. Happy Yay. anniversary, Steph. Thank hey. you. To you and Luis, one of our photographers here at KSAT. Thank you. Very excited. Well, I was going to say happy anniversary, but I know you're asleep, Luis. Yeah. <laughs> Let's text yeah. him right now. Wake him up. Yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, how about a Zoom call? Oh, yeah. That, <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> hey, you were talking about humidity, and yeah, we're going to be dealing with that for the next couple of days, even you know with these temperatures kind of on the, the lower side, and uh, got a chance of rain, so that's encouraging. Showers and a few thunderstorms around here. Uh, we've had a few reports of some light rain. It looks like everything is uh, fairly dry over there by the airport as of right now, but uh, you know, there's not much on radar. This is all just some, some clutter, but a few of these little sprinkly showers are kind of working their way around the area. Not much, but we'll see more. It's going to be more encouraging as the uh, the morning rolls on, especially later on this afternoon. Oak is still on the high side. The updated count is going to be coming out in about uh, an hour, hour and a half or so. And uh, throughout the rest of today, temperatures will stay pretty steady this morning. We are about mm, 15 degrees above normal with a couple of showers here and there. And we'll see a few showers and thunderstorms as the, uh, well, especially this afternoon, We're going to make it up into the upper 70s today at noon and then top off right around 80 later on today. Some of those thunderstorms, by the the way, especially in our eastern counties, potentially it could be on the, the stronger side later on today and maybe even produce uh, some hail. We do still keep rain chances around the next couple of days. Temperatures will be dropping down tomorrow, rebounding a little bit Friday and then really dropping down for the weekend. So we're looking at some much cooler temperatures by the weekend. Those details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King, and uh, you haven't had much to talk about this morning. No, but we do have one big problem, uh, Mike, and that's on the southwest side. Good morning to you. Good morning to uh, everyone 
out there. A lot of green on the map, but as we take a closer uh, look at things this morning, we do have a situation here on the south west side and you're seeing this big backup now to nine uh, miles per hour. We did have some construction uh, overnight, but usually when you see something like this, it's some sort of a crash or some sort of a road blockage. So we're working to get some more information on that. But again, if your travels take you on the southwest side, um, 35 maybe coming in from Lytle right now, 29 minutes. So that's much higher uh, than normal. Usually that's about 16, 17 minutes into downtown San Antonio right now, 29 minutes because that situation are in the southwest side. Uh, other travel times, 25 minutes coming in from New Braunfels, 24 minutes on I-10 from Bernie and 29 minutes on I-10 from Seguin into downtown San Antonio. Here is a look at Transguy 281 uh, at Hildebrand looking okay this morning. We were talking about that Laredo situation downtown, but that has apparently cleared up. And we'll get some more updates on some of the situations going on around town coming up. Mark, Stephanie? See you in just a bit. Thank you very much, Samuel. Three families forced from their homes and left with almost nothing following a massive fire in Somerset. Yeah, let's go. The fire marshal says a number of homes and vehicles were destroyed at J&M Lane off of FM 476 over the weekend. Stephen Cavazos is live downtown this morning and spoke with one woman who says she and her family escaped the flames and are lucky to be alive. Stephen. Yeah, Mark Stephanie Leslie Ramos says that she was taking care of her baby when her husband rushed their family out of the home and she says it wasn't long after that fire crews began to arrive in their area and just in a matter of hours everything they had was gone. Now that fire happened on a small stretch of road uh, and the fa that other family members were actually living in the area. Ramos says that the pr property belonged to her husband's family and Ramos tells us that they watched as that fire began to spread and as more crews from surrounding areas began to arrive, the families were asked to move further back as it began to spread and intensify. Now, after hours after the flames were extinguished, Ramos and her family arrived back to only find debris and smoke. She said the family had lived on the property for decades and they're now dealing with a great loss. It's just a horrible feeling. And my my in-laws, they raised their nine kids there. They were raising their grandkids there and now Everything's just gone. The yeah, Atascosa Fire Marshal tells us a homeowner was burning trash when a piece had gotten away, and that's when the fire began. Now, Ramos says that she is just grateful that nobody was injured in this fire, and she says for now the family is hoping to rebuild. Reporting live downtown, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. Five people have been detained after a man was stabbed in the stomach overnight. It happened just before 1130 last night in the 1200 block of Pleasanton Road. That's on the city's south side. Police say it all started with some sort of argument. There's limited information at this time. But they say they believe alcohol may have been a factor. Officers say the man was taken to University Hospital with a life threatening injury. As we said, five people were taken into custody. The investigation is ongoing. And taking a look at where we stand with the coronavirus cases in Bear County, city health officials are reporting 273 new COVID-19 cases. One more person has died from the virus. There is a little bit of a decrease in hospitalizations. 211 COVID-19 patients are in our local hospitals this morning. 76 people are in the ICU and 33 are on ventilators. Texas Department of State Health Services says more than 609,000 people in Bear County have received their first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. They also say more than 380,000 people are now fully vaccinated. If you want to get vaccinated but don't know how to schedule an appointment, we have all that information right now on ksat.com. This morning, questions about when the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine will once again be available after federal health officials abruptly called for a pause in administering the shots. It comes after half a dozen people left out of nearly 7 million who received the vaccine developed an extremely rare blood clotting disorder. One person has died. Those federal health officials will be meeting on this today. ABC's Faith Abube is in Washington with the latest. Good morning. We really can't stress this enough. This rare disorder was found in six people out of the nearly 7 million who've received the J&J &J vaccine. That's less than one in a million, meaning you have a higher chance of being struck by lightning. This morning, all 50 states, D.C. and Puerto Rico, temporarily canceling their Johnson & Johnson vaccine appointments. An investigation underway after six people who received the one-dose vaccine developed an extremely rare blood clot. This is a really rare event. There have been six out of the six 
1.85 million doses, which is less than one in a million. The FDA and CDC recommending the pause out of an abundance of caution. The six patients, women between 18 and 48 years old, they developed symptoms like severe headaches, shortness of breath, abdominal or leg pain within three weeks of receiving the shot. One woman died, another is in critical condition. Health officials still don't know whether it was the vaccine that caused the rare disorder. So I think people need to be reassured that even when there's no definitive link or causality, that no no chances will be taken when it comes to people's safety. Health officials still believe the benefits of getting vaccinated far outweigh any potential risks. President Biden saying the race to vaccinate continues. There's enough vaccine that is basically 100 percent unquestionable for every single solitary American. Again, federal health officials are hosting a public meeting today. They're expected to make a decision within the next few days on whether to unpause the J&J vaccine. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. Here at home, we are less than a week away before voters will make a decision on several local races, includes choosing who will be the next mayor of San Antonio. Last night kicked off the Bear Facts KSAT San Antonio Report three day mayoral forum. The forum is meant to give you a chance to hear from the three candidates. And last night, incumbent Mayor Ron Nierberg was asked about several issues, including police union contract and the proposition that could remove collective bargaining. Also talked about the pledge he made regarding accountability. And I wanted to make sure that people knew I understood that and I want to be held accountable for the outcomes uh, of what we're trying to achieve in terms of the negotiation. That's what that was all about. Uh, we can get this done. We've got to get it done at the table, at least under the current rules. Um, and, and it may not be easy, it may not be quick, uh, but I want to be held accountable to it. And the conversation also covered topics like the homeless and the Alamo Plaza redevelopment plan. Nuremberg also responded to the call for safety measures for cyclists and pedestrians. You can watch the entire forum right now on KSAT.com. Our mayoral forum is not over yet. Tonight we'll get a chance to hear from former councilman and mayoral candidate Greg Brockhaus. We will begin the forum on air at 630 and then online at KSAT.com at 7 p.m. We will hear from Denise Gutierrez Homer tomorrow. It is 10 minutes past the hour on your Wednesday morning. Domino's launching a pizza delivery robot car. Still ahead, we're going to tell you about its features. Now that it's finally spring, it's time for Blue Bonnets to take over. Next on GMSA, Katrina Weber explains why the wildflower season is taking a bit longer to warm up this year. And taking a look outside with live cam. We were pretty warm on Monday, but things are a little bit more milder and we are expecting rain. We're going to check in with Mike in a little while. And welcome back. It's about 614 now. It seems like only yesterday when ice and snow were covering the ground. Now that spring has finally sprung, it's time for blue bonnets to take over. But as Katrina Weber reports, the wildflower season is taking a bit longer to warm up. Hi. Hi. It's not every day this family gets to stop and smell the wildflowers. Their life in the Big Apple can be hectic. I hadn't seen blue bonnets for about 19 years since moving to New York, and so I really wanted to come see them. A native San Antonian, Ann Dias Little, had told her husband Jeremy all about our wildflower season. They're beautiful. We got lots of pictures around the house of them, but seeing them and, you know, I'm ready to see the field, uh, uh, field filled with them. With their jobs shut down by the pandemic, the family thought this was a good time to make lasting memories here in Texas with baby Corey. Corey look at the camera. So far, though, it's not quite what they pictured. A patch here and there. They are a little late. Uh, the weather did push them behind a little bit, but also we can contribute that to how dry we are. Scott Litchke with the San Antonio Botanical Garden says drought conditions added to an unusual winter in San Antonio have some spring blooms making a delayed appearance. He says although February's snow and ice put an unforgiving freeze on citrus plants and palm trees, it looks like wildflowers were able to dodge that deadly frozen bullet. The most crucial time for Texas wildflowers is really September, October, November. That's when they set their seed and they begin to germinate. While nature has dealt this area a double blow this year, the experts say don't count out this wildflower season just yet. There's still a lot more time 
for it to grow. Don't give up on the blue bonnets. They're a little behind, but they're coming. The littles, though, are making the most of the current blue bonnet situation. They're there and, you know, it'll, it'll scratch the itch for now. <laughs> Settling for their flower fix in small doses. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Aww. I know those pictures are so cute. Aren't they great? It's about 616. Let's check back with Samuel King. Looks like things are flowing right now. Things are, are flowing for most of the area, Stephanie Mark, except on the southwest side on I-35. Still having seen some reports of a major uh, backup and slowdown as we take a closer uh, look at the uh, uh, maps here. Again, this is a 35 approaching Loop 410 traffic down to 8 miles per hour, according uh, to our scanner, uh, well, to, according to our system, I should say, there. So if, if you take uh, 35 to come in into town, uh, just know that once you get between 1604 and 410, there's going to be a bit of a slowdown this morning. And once you get inside 410 from both the north northeast side and the southwest side in San Antonio. Things improve very quickly. Northbound 10 minutes between Loop 410 and downtown San Antonio. So that's a very good thing there. And uh, now let's look at again the travel time here. And again, you're up to 35 minutes coming from Lytle on 35. So uh, that's uh, definitely an unusual uh, slowdown for this time of morning. But again, once you get downtown, this is 35 at Laredo. Things moving well. Let's try to get one more camera here. Sometimes we get a sort of a gap in the Simpson. There we go. 410 at Calebra. We had some construction overnight there, but things are flowing well this morning, guys. Thank you, Samuel. Mike, where'd you go? Oh, looking I'm just uh, looking at something. <laughs> I was trying to see uh, what is being reported and still not anything reported as far as any um, rain around the area at any of the reporting stations. So didn't mean to turn my back on you. Apologize on that one. But watch out. We've had a couple of uh, light little showers around the area so far this morning. So just kind of take it easy when you uh, hit the roads and obviously watch out for the buses out there. Temperature is going to be pretty steady this morning. A couple of light little showers. I mean, there's hardly anything if at all showing up on radar right now. But then later on this afternoon, we do have a, a better chance to see some showers and thunderstorms. 80 for high temperature today, which is what you would expect this time of year. All right, I'm going to join in on the Blue Bonnet bandwagon. And as you can see, there's plenty of them out there. This is up around uh, Mule Shoe Park. Gorgeous, way up there. And that's uh, near Marble Falls, I believe, because we had some pictures uh, a couple of days ago from the same photographer. So thank you very much for that. You know, I was just glancing over and some of the uh, Transguide cameras that were still looping on through, and it looked like um, 281 near Hildebrand. There may have been, road may have been a little bit damp. It looked like it was a little bit shiny. So just something to keep in mind. Over there by the airport, still doesn't look like it's... Yeah, everything's moving along pretty well. Maybe a little bit of uh, some sprinkles out there. And there's just a few of them, again, that are showing up on radar. That's some clutter right around the radar site. But we've had a couple of these light little sprinkly showers here and there. Later on this afternoon, some thunderstorms are going to be developing. And there is the possibility, well off to the east, that some could be on the strong, potentially severe side, especially in our extreme eastern counties. Large hail would be the biggest threat with that. So something, obviously, to keep in mind off to the east. Going through the next few days, a uh, few showers and thunderstorms around today will still keep the chance of rain around tomorrow. It won't be raining constantly. Not everybody's going to see a bunch of rain, but at least there is that chance. And uh, going into Friday evening as well as early on Saturday, the difference then going into the weekend, we will have those cooler temperatures around here. So today, like I said, up close to 80 and then tomorrow a little bit cooler rebound Friday and then really cool by the weekend. 78 at noon, a couple of showers scattered about the area. A few showers, a couple of thunderstorms today. One or two of them may be on the stronger side, especially well off to the east. Tomorrow we still have a decent chance of rain. Same thing on Friday and the weekend. Eh, breezy on Saturday, still an OK shot at some rain. And I put an extra A in there. I just noticed on that is rain on Saturday. Um, 65. It's okay. Check your work before you turn it in, kids. No, well, that's okay because we really need, we don't just want rain. We want uh, rain. rain. We need that right. much rain if yeah. we can. That's We're on board. Story with and it. I'm sticking to it. So, and I did that on purpose just to set an example for the kids to make sure they check their work. That's a great example. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. <laughs> he would be the fun teacher, wouldn't he? <laughs> yes. <laughs> 620, about 72 degrees. And coming up, if you are ready to find your other half but want to be safe from coronavirus, Facebook now testing a new video speed dating app. All the details next.
Did you know that every single flush flings odors onto your soft surfaces? Then they get released back into the air, so you smell them later. Ew, right? That's why Febreze created small spaces. Press firmly and watch it get to work. Unlike the leading cone, small spaces continuously eliminates odors in the air and on surfaces, so they don't come back for 45 days. Just imagine what it can do with other odors. Folks, the world's first fully autonomous vehicle is almost at the finish line. Today, we're going to fine tune the dynamic braking system. Woo! What a ride. <laughs> I invested in Invesco QQQ, a fund that invests in the innovators of the NASDAQ 100. Like you. You don't have to be a deep learning engineer to help make the world a smarter place. Does it come in blue? Become an agent of innovation with Invesco QQQ. In this morning's GMA First Look, a possible cold case breakthrough. For nearly 25 years, questions have remained unanswered in the disappearance of Kristen Smart. The then 19-year-old freshman disappeared after a party near California Polytechnic State University. Investigators say she was last seen with classmate Paul Flores, who was walking her home that night. This morning, Flores waking up behind bars accused of murder. Paul remained as a person of interest and as the case progressed, became uh, a suspect and the prime suspect in the case. Uh, detectives secured a court order authorizing the interception and monitoring of Paul Flores' cell phone and text messages. Smart's family has been hoping for answers for decades. We don't have closure. We don't know what's happened, and it's been 20 years. So what's the next step for investigators? We speak with the podcaster who helped shed new light on the case. It's coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. If you missed it, some people are getting their pizza delivered by robot. This week, Domino's started rolling out a robot car delivery service to customers in Houston. Kind of a test market thing. Customers t get texts and updates on the driverless car's location. Once it arrives, you enter code, the doors open up, and you grab your pizza. No word on when the service might possibly expand. A new launch event for Apple. The tech giant confirms its latest product reveal will be next Tuesday. The event is expected to show off Apple's new iPads and Macs. There's also talk of new AirPods and the AirTags, a tracking device to help keep track of valuables. Microsoft unveiled its Surface Laptop 4, a competition for Apple's MacBook Air. Customers will have two sizes to choose from, the 13.5 or 15 inch. They offer up to 19 hours battery life and start at $1,000. Facebook is testing a video speed dating app. It's called Sparked, and it's touted as video speed dating with kind of people. Initial dates last four minutes, but if users agree, they can schedule a 10-minute second date. Sparked is free, and there's no swiping. For the first time since November of 2016, the Spurs have won back-to-back -back road games on back-to-back -back nights. First in Dallas on Sunday with DeMar DeRozan's game-winning basket with under a second to play. And then that Monday night blowout of the Magic in Orlando. So we hope the win streak continues tonight. Spurs play against the Raptors at the Amelie Arena in Tampa starting tonight at 6.30 San Antonio time. Go Spurs, go. Yes, go Spurs, go. Time now is 6.26 and about 72 degrees right now. Today is a perfect perfect excuse to plant the seeds of a new hobby because it's National Gardening Day. So head Sarah Costa tells us about easy ways to grow your own garden right here in South Texas. A CDC panel meeting today to talk about the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine. Next, more on what they are hoping to get done by the end of the day. We are seeing slowdowns headed into the city. Sam King will tell us where coming up in a traffic report and we'll check back on Mike in our midweek forecasts. One man rushed to the hospital and five others detained after a stabbing last night. I'm Stephen Cavazos and coming up this morning on GMSA, the investigation that is now underway. Police are still searching for baby James Chavez who disappeared last month. Now the mother who was arrested had her bond reduced. We have the latest on this investigation. And outside with live cam this morning, it is really, really muggy out there this morning. Really hits you as you walk out the door for work or school. But Mike says rain is still in the forecast. Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, April 14th.
Happy Wednesday, and I think the humidity is okay because there's a payoff, right? There is a payoff. Yes, at some point we reach a saturation point and we might get some rain out of this stuff. You know, and the thing is also we at least have uh, the disturbances coming on through here, which is going to kind of, as I always say, sort of squeeze the, the rain out of it because a lot of times you can just have all this humidity and get nothing as far as any rain. We've had a couple of showers reported around the area. Nothing is uh, showing up in this picture. Doesn't even look like the road is is damp at all, although uh, earlier and we're going to check with uh, Sam in just a moment. It looked like 281 near Hildebrand may have been a little bit of a machine on the road, may have had a couple of little showers out there. 72 degrees right now. We're about uh, 14, 15 above normal and a lot of humidity with that dew point at 66. Light uh, breeze out of the northeast at uh, three miles per hour. And and as far as anything on radar, uh, nothing up here in the hill country, perhaps this is all some clutter. And that's, yeah, all we can squeeze out right now. If there's a little bit of uh, some drizzle out there, it's too light to be picked up on radar. Oak is on the high side, and at least it did come down from the previous day's reading. Updated count is going to be coming out in probably half hour, 45 minutes or so. Warm, humid couple of showers or sprinkles here and there this morning. Then we have a better chance, about a 40% chance for showers and a couple of thunderstorms, 80 for a high temperature. And some of those storms, especially off to the east, may be potentially on the strong or severe side uh, in our extreme eastern counties. Tomorrow, we still have more showers, a couple of storms, maybe a stronger one or two. It is going to be slightly cooler tomorrow. We'll sort of bounce back with temperatures on Friday, still some rain chances, and even on Saturday, but then cooler over the weekend as well. So plus we get rid of the humidity over the weekend. It's encouraging, but it's also encouraging for our window of opportunity for rain, which is now through first part of the weekend. Details on the weekend forecast coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority and Samuel King, have you seen any any little bits of rain out there at all or anything? Just some uh, clouds here and there, and maybe as m you were mentioning, uh, 281 and Hildebrand, maybe a little shower there on the road, but nothing too widespread at the moment. But we'll continue to watch it, just like we are here at 35 and New Laredo Highway on the southwest side. We've had a bit of a slowdown there, might have been a crash, also had some construction uh, in this area overnight. So let's take a closer uh, look at this situation down here. You see traffic moving moving very slowly there uh, northbound on 35. And this is a look at that on the map here down to 12 uh, miles per hour. It was at nine just a short time ago. This backup is about uh, four miles. So if you're coming in from, uh, for instance, the Lytle area on 35, 41 minutes uh, to get uh, to downtown San Antonio. But things improve very quickly once you get inside uh, Loop 410. 26 minutes coming in from New Braunfels, 28 minutes from Pleasanton, 24 minutes coming in from Bernie on I-10. And again, uh, 35 at uh, New Laredo Highway. This is if you hear very slow traffic on the uh, southwest side here. So good to get a view of that. Just something to keep in mind this morning. And we'll have another update coming up. Thank you, Samuel. One man run to rushed to the hospital. Five others detained by San Antonio police following a stabbing last night. According to police, this happened in the 1200 block of Pleasanton Road east of I-35. Stephen Cavazos live downtown this morning and has more on the investigation. Stephen. Well, Mark Stephanie, police say that that man was at a group home apartment when he was stabbed sometime around 1130 last night. Now, although they say he wasn't able to give them a whole lot of information, they believe that alcohol may have played a factor leading up to this altercation. Now, police say the man was stabbed in the abdomen and later rushed to University Hospital. Right now, police have not identified that suspect, but they were able to detain, detain five people sometime after. Now, that man's condition is not known right now, but his injuries were considered life threatening. Police say that this is still very much an active investigation as of this morning, but we will continue to follow those details and bring them to you as they become available. But for now, reporting live, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. Now to the latest, a mother of a missing baby, James Chavez, who was arrested after his disappearance, had her bond reduced by a judge. Delaney Chavez was arrested last month and booked on a charge of abandoning or endangering a child. She was held on a $250,000 bond, but records show a judge reduced her bond to $150,000 yesterday. Baby James was reported missing back in February after his mother was arrested. She told police she had planned to give the 18-month-old up for adoption. 
During a search, officers found a bloody crib sheet. Police are still looking for baby James. The Electric Reliability Council of Texas, or ERCOT, canceled an order hours after urging consumers and businesses to reduce their electricity usage Tuesday afternoon. ERCOT says the alert was issued because of a combination of factors. CPS Energy also sent out an update with four reasons for the request. They say ERCOT dealt with temperatures that were higher than expected. An ERCOT spokesperson told the Texas Tribune that seasonal maintenance impacted more plants because of additional repairs necessary from those big February winter storms. The Minneapolis area on edge amid growing anger over the fatal police shooting of Dante Wright. For the third straight night, protesters were back on the streets of the Brooklyn Center facing off with police and National Guard troops. The veteran officer who said she mistakenly shot and killed Wright after pulling him over has turned in her resignation. As Wright's family calls for justice, we're expected to find out today what charges the officer might face. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the details. Another night of unrest in Brooklyn Center, Minnesota, where crowds once again gather past curfew. <laughs> Protesting the death of Dante Wright, the 20-year-old unarmed black man killed by police during a traffic stop. Some demonstrators used a line of umbrellas to shield themselves as police fired flashbangs. The protests coming hours before an expected announcement today on possible charges for Wright's death. According to our Minneapolis station, KSTP, the county attorney's office is planning on charging former police officer Kim Potter today. The extent of the charges, unclear. Wright's loved ones, including the mother of his two-year-old son, are demanding a murder charge. I'm completely charged, and I just want justice for my son's dad, because it's just not fair. Officer Potter shot and killed Wright Sunday while trying to arrest him on an outstanding warrant. Records show Wright failed to appear in court on charges of possessing a firearm without a permit and running away from law enforcement. Body camera video shows Wright trying to get back into his car during the arrest. Officer Potter is heard yelling taser, but then fires her gun. Officials call the shooting an accidental discharge. Tuesday, the 26-year veteran tried to quit, writing, I believe it is in the best interest of the community, the department, and my fellow officers if I resign immediately. But the mayor says he has not accepted Potter's resignation amid outcry from local leaders who say she should be fired because the resignation could allow her to collect a pension. Police Chief Tim Gannon has also resigned after being criticized for the department's response. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. Today, the Dallas Morning News is reporting that former Texas Lieutenant Governor David Dewhurst has been arrested on a domestic violence charge in Dallas. Officials say the 75-year-old was booked in the Dallas County Jail but released just before 5 o'clock this morning. Police say officers were called to a disturbance near Dallas Love Field yesterday afternoon. They spoke to a woman who said she'd been assaulted by a man she knew. Dewhurst is facing a charge of misdemeanor assault family violence. His bond set at $1,000. The CDC's Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices will meet this afternoon to review the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine blood clot cases. The CDC and the Food and Drug Administration say a CDC panel will, quote, review these cases and assess their potential significance, end quote. They say they plan to have updated recommendations by the end of the day. People experiencing a severe headache, abdominal pain, leg pain, or shortness of breath who have received the vaccine within the last three weeks should contact their doctor. Interesting. That seems to change by the day, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Just about 640 on your Wednesday. It's National Gardening Day. I'm Sarah Costa. Coming up on GMSA, we visit the San Antonio Botanical Garden. We talk about the benefits of gardening and how to start your very own garden. 642, happy National Gardening Day. Gardening is known to help lower stress, improve your mood, and can be a great form of exercise. Sarah Costa, who loves to garden herself, visited the San Antonio Botanical Garden to learn more about easy ways to grow your own garden here in South Texas. I absolutely love to garden. I started about three years ago in a local community garden growing produce, and that passion has followed me to my very own garden at my first home. But it wasn't the success I fell in love with because I'm definitely no pro. It was the mental health benefits that came with it. There's a, a good body of research on just the, the health benefits of getting out and interacting with nature in general. Uh, it, in a minimum of like say two hours per week, uh, there can be benefits to uh, reduction of stress, anxiety, healing effects. Andrew LeBay, now he is a pro. 
He's the director of horticulture at the San Antonio Botanical Garden. He says if you want to start a garden, it all starts with the soil and make sure to add about one inch of compost to any new area where you'll be planting. We always put a lot of effort initially into uh, working, tilling, breaking up, adding compost that's, that adds fertility to the soil. He says then you want to decide what you want to grow and look at the location. Does what you are growing require a lot of sun? Then make sure you're in a sunny spot. If it's in the shade, you want to grow plants that thrive in partial shade. If you want to see color or flowers in your garden, you can plant zinnias. They do really well in the heat here and they'll bloom through the fall. LeBay says if you want to grow flowers, your best bet is to plant native flowering plants that can take the heat of the summer, that are drought tolerant and can handle sporadic Texas winters. When I replanted my garden after the Texas freeze, I planted a lot of those native flowering plants that LeBay talked about, like Greg's mist flower. These are great pollinators. The monarchs absolutely love them. If you're looking for a shrub option, Texas sage, he says, is the way to go. And of course, he talked about lantanas. You have trailing lantanas that make a beautiful purple flower. You have golden lantanas with those yellow flowers. Another great option is Mexican heather. But LeBay's best advice, it's okay if your plants don't make it. Like gardening, gardeners are always growing as they learn. Don't get too discouraged. Uh, even the, the best horticulturists, they, they lose plants and there's a lot to learn. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. I planted a bunch of stuff several years ago when I lived out in Fair Oaks Ranch. And I was so proud of myself, but the next morning I realized that this was, uh, I turned my place into lubies for deer. Uh. And everything was gone. <laughs> Aww. It, it could have been nice. It, yeah, I mean, they were well fed. Let's just say that. So, <laughs> some happy deer so it's good there. to plant native species, but look for yes. the deer proof ones too, if yeah. possible. Okay. Lubies for deer. We'll ask Sarah about that as well. She seems to have done a good job so far. She did a great job, but it's, yeah, it's like they all asked for the Luan platter, and then <laughs> we, made it, we, we little, made it happen. A little thank you note. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> You're welcome, dear. No problem. <laughs> they didn't even pay for their meal. Aww. You know, <laughs> funny. Mark did that for them. Anyway, we still have this situation on the southwest side. This is the view from I-35 at New Laredo Highway. There was a, a crash there earlier. See, it appears to be uh, in the frontage roads there. We'll take a closer uh, look at that uh, here on the trans guide camera. You can see traffic moving slowly, but it does appear that the delay uh, is getting better. Look, you're up to 50 miles per hour at this stretch approaching loop 410 here, but uh, still we have a backup almost all the way back uh, to Von Ormy and uh, loop 1604, but it is improving slightly and it does get better once you get inside loop 410. We'll start on the northeast side, 11 minutes uh, heading uh, outbound there from downtown to loop 410 and 10 minutes inbound. We do have a stalled vehicle at uh, 35 and uh, Laredo downtown, 11 minutes inbound. So again, improves very quickly once you get inside uh, loop 410. And again, let's take a, another look at this situation again. Southwest side, a few uh, more delays there. And, and before I toss it back over to you guys, just wanted to mention today is the day. If you haven't renewed your vehicle, Sarah talked about this uh, yesterday morning, uh, but if you haven't renewed your vehicle, that grace period ends today. So we want to get online and get that squared away and avoid any potential fines. Yes, a good reminder. Thank you, Samuel. You know, the nice thing about uh, gardening, I'm not a green thumb type person, but I remember uh, when I was a little kid growing strawberries and stuff like that is, you know, something you actually did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and even if you, you know, put the plan in the ground and look at it, I did that. You know, that, that's just that's that certain true. satisfaction. It's nice to too. eat the fruits of your labor. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Literally. Yeah. And it's, it, you know, kids get a kick out of it too. It's like, I grew that. So, Aww. yeah. And, hey, beautiful picture out there. The pink's your favorite color, isn't it? Stuff? Yeah, pink and purple. Yeah. Those are all nice. Is that Oceana pink? Uh, Some parts, right? Kind of. Yes, going back to yesterday's rose color, <laughs> the Oceana pink roses, and had to double check with my wife on that color. Anyway, it turns out she was right. Yes, of course, always. <laughs> uh, we've got a lot of clouds out there this morning, and <laughs> Sam's over there just smiling, Cheshire cat grin looking at me when I said that. Yes, I. I always remember that, Sam. She's always right. So anyway, uh, we've got uh, rain chances are going to be improving throughout the day today and the next couple of days. So this is kind of the window of opportunity that we have here. Again, it won't be raining constantly. Not everybody's going to get a whole bunch, but at least there is that chance of rain throughout uh, the day today going into tomorrow as well as on Friday. So this is a uh, pretty encouraging and this is 
I, I'm always afraid to say one of the best chances we've had, but it is the best chance we've had around here in a while for some of these uh, showers. And this will be going through at least Friday and maybe even or, and into Saturday, I should say. Now, this afternoon, there is the chance some of those storms off to the east could be on this potentially severe side, strong storms, maybe some large hail. And this would be in our extreme eastern counties. And that would be uh, later on this afternoon. That's the outlook from the uh, Storm Prediction Center. Now, dew points, the measure moisture in the atmosphere, the humidity that's out there right now, it is going to be sticking around, which you need, you know, got to have some moisture in the air and get that kind of squeezed out. So at least that's a good thing that some of it's going to be squeezed out in the next couple of days. Then we go into the weekend and we have a more potent front moving on through here. And so that's going to really kind of clear out that humidity and forcing that pretty much takes the rain chances with it. We will still have an OK shot at some rain on Saturday, but really now through late Friday and maybe early, early Saturday is going to be the best opportunity to see some rain around here. And with those lower dew points over the weekend, that's going to allow temperatures to especially morning low temperatures to be kind of on the chilly side. 78 degrees today at noon, couple of showers around here and then 80 for a high temperature. What you would expect this time of year, average high is 80. Showers, couple of thunderstorms. Tomorrow, more rain chances. A little cooler down to mid 70s, back up to upper 70s, and then mid 60s over the weekend, and uh, some low 50s by the start of next week. Speaking of gardening, once again, Today on SA Live. On SA Live, yep. And we're going to tell you all about that and have some lessons on how to do some gardening and um, celebrate National Gardening Day. Thank you, Mike. We're running a, little, little, running a little behind is what I'm trying to say. It's about 10 till 72 degrees. And April is National Autism Awareness Month, but how much do you know about autism? Tomorrow on GMSA, facts you may not know about. And outside with Live Cam, the news you need to know before you go is coming up. Good morning. Coming up on GMA, the latest on the vaccine pause from Johnson and Johnson. 50 states now halting the rollout of the single shot vaccine amid blood clot concerns. What we know so far and what to know if you've already had that shot, the principal deputy director of the CDC joins us live. That plus much more coming up only on GMA. See you all soon. San Antonio police are investigating a stabbing that sent one man to the hospital with life threatening injuries. This happened last night in the 1200 block of Pleasanton Road, just east of I-35. Now, right now, these, this remains under investigation. They say that man who is believed to be in his 50s was not able to give them a whole lot of information, but police say the man was at a group home apartment at the time of the stabbing and five people were later detained. Now, this did happen sometime around 1130 last night. Police say the man was stabbed in the abdomen and rushed University Hospital. His condition is not known right now, but his injuries were considered life threatening. Police have not identified the suspect. Although police say that the investigation is still ongoing, they believe alcohol may have played a factor. Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Coming up today on GMS 89, San Antonio City Council adopted a plan back in 2019 to help the city fight the effects of climate change. So how has that been going? Our Katie Blake breaks down the latest numbers from the city in a climate minute at nine after Good Morning America. Activity is ramping up in the traffic lab. Here's Samuel King. Thanks, Mark and Stephanie. We have a new crash here in I-35 uh, northbound here in the uh, in the Splash Town area. Excuse me, there I was walked over here a little early, but you can see uh, some of the uh, backup there starting uh, to grow there in uh, the area. So again, this isn't. Now we have a the new icon there, the bigger uh, icon. So you're going to see some delays heading northbound on 35 toward Loop 410. We've been talking about this issue on the southwest side here on 35 as well. It is getting better at 410, uh, but you still have a bit of a delay uh, coming in. So let's take a quick look here. I left this in there, but you can see a north inbound. You're down to uh, 10 minutes, so that's a good thing there. 36 minutes still coming in from Lytle, 27 minutes coming in from New Braunfels, Mike. And uh, look at 410 over there by the airport. We're looking off to the east, kind of kind of fuzzy looking, if you will, a lot of humidity. There may be some damp spots on the roads. We've had a few little sprinkles around this morning. Not a lot, though. 72 in town, 60s in portions of the hill country. A decent chance, about a 40% chance for showers and a few thunderstorms today. Some could be on the stronger side, well off to the east. 80 for a high temperature today and rain chances the next couple of days. Again, happy anniversary to you and Luis. Thank yes. you. You guys have a great day. We'll see you back here at 9.